next thing I want to talk about with the Rift and Pizzagate trainer is the ability to give a dynamic stretch to our children. And a dynamic and an active stretch is something that has so much more evidence behind it than a passive stretch. Now, lots of the time, children have tightness in their hamstrings and also in their gastrocnemius, which is the bigger calf muscle, the one that also attaches to above your knee and not just below your knee and the ankle. Now, the issue with this muscle is that when the gastrocnemius is tight, lots of the time people think AFOs. They think that a pair of AFOs that does the dorsiflexion will stretch out the gastrocnemius. And actually it doesn't, it just stretches out the soleus. To stretch out the gastrocnemius, which is a biarticular muscle, we need dorsiflexion and knee extension. So unless somebody is sitting there with their legs out straight and their air flows on, they're not having any calf stretch whatsoever. Unless only their soleus is tight, which is very, very, very unlikely because usually one articular muscles do not become tight. So in order to combat this, not only do we want to actually stretch that muscle by isolating both knee extension and dorsiflexion, in addition to that, we want to do it dynamically and actively, if we can, for an even better stretch. Once we've got these things under control and we've got the ability to do these things, actually we can do that stretch for much less time during the day because it's going to be much more effective than a passive stretch. So here I'm using gaiters, which helps with the knee extension. I've got Doc Martin's boots on, which allows some dorsiflexion. Um, if you do them up slightly looser at the laces, then it can allow some dorsiflexion. You want to make sure that whatever range of movement that your client's uh, ankle dorsiflexion is, that you get it to a stretch. So it might, be, might mean that the AFOs are more than enough to give them that stretch. I have used a weight as well, so that we can enable some more dorsiflexion. So here we have the gaiters for knee extension. We have drop martins secured to the, to the short stand. We might also want to put some pronation supporting insoles in, because if the ankles go into pronation, it takes, it's a compensation for the gastrocnemius stretch, and it will actually take the stretch off. So we might want to think about insoles as well. And then in addition to this, just to show you every single option available, I've actually propped it up onto a, a stepping stone to make a wedge as well. You can do this in any way. You can tilt a therapy bench to have it on a wedge, especially if your walker is taller because it's used to support them all the way up to their arms while they're doing walking. You can also use a book. I've stacked a hardback book up onto an object before, but whatever you use, just try to make sure it's measurable because you want to maintain or sustain the current angle that you've got, and then maybe over time you might want to increase it, or maybe through a growth spurt or something where your child becomes tighter, you might want to reduce it. So whatever you use, just try to measure it. You can even measure it with a goniometer if it's something that's not really very measurable. So as you can see here, we've got the gaiters on to enable knee extension. We've got the shore stand, which ensures that the feet are stable without the therapist's hands having to constantly be holding them. And we've got the heels down as well. You can adjust all of this to make sure there is full on foot contact with the whole board. And then I've got it up on this stepping stone to get a wedge into there as well and to add some dorsiflexion. So after you've seen that close-up video of how to isolate the gastrocnemius, you can now start to build in more active and dynamic movements into that calf muscle stretch. So when your child has stood there with all of this uh, set up, then you can start really, really activating that stretch by doing some reaching. Now this is all going to be weight shifting onto each leg. You can even use one of those wobbly wedges underneath it as well, which are filled with air if your child is able to get their foot up into dorsiflexion. If they're not, and if they're actually stuck with plantar flexion, maybe even the plantar flexion is a stretch, you could use that wedge to put the other way around so their toes go down into plantar flexion. Whatever you're using, when your child is upright, if you get them weight bearing and reaching and twisting around their trunk, reaching for different toys, looking at different people, you're going to really add in lots and lots of dynamic factors to this very active gastrocnemius stretch. I hope you found this useful. The next active stretch I want to talk about with the Rift and Pace is a hamstring stretch. Now lots of the time children have tight hamstrings. This could lead to a reduced popliteal angle, which might be just the very beginning factor, or it could be as much as a knee contraction. 
Now, if it's a knee contractor, we're going to have to think about the gaiters. If it's a little bit, maybe we're talking less than 15 degrees, we might be able to put gaiters on. And actually, just standing like this, with a pair of gaiters on, with heels flat on the floor, or in their AFOs, might be a hamstring stretch enough for them. In children who don't have a knee contracture and have only got a reduced popliteal angle, then we can actually add some more onto that stretch by encouraging bending forwards and down as well. So children will need to have some sort of trunk control to be able to do this, unlike my model right here. And um, so we are going to have knee extension with the gaiters on, feet flat on the floor, or with AFOs, and then this is coming all the way right down to the hips, as you can see here. So for the hamstring stretch, again, we have the feet very secure onto the shore stand with all of these straps, making sure that we have full foot contact. We have the gaiters on, and then this support here is all the way down to the hip crease. So we've got the hip crease right here, and this means that hip flexion is enabled. So she can come down, reach for toys, and stretch back up again, getting that targeted stretch to the back of the hamstrings. So as you can see from this video, we've now got the child standing completely upright with this ability to flex forwards and we're going to encourage them to come down, reach things and come up again. And we know that this is isolating the hamstrings only because their knees are straight, their feet are still and they're going to get that stretch. So we might want to just experiment first and just see actually where can they reach to. Maybe just here and then maybe a little bit more and a little bit more. And then as time goes on, their hamstrings warm up you could bring the toys further and further down and see how far they can come. If they can talk, they can give you feedback. If not, you might just find some reluctance to do it or some signs of pain in their usual ways. If it's too much of a stretch. And if that's the case, then you can just bring them back up and give them a rest. And actually, you might want to just, just carry on with some static standing with them. Um, another way to isolate each hamstring, you think about the hamstrings, they're made up of three muscles and not just one. There's a lateral, a medial and a middle one. So to isolate the different ones, you can do reaching in different directions. So you might want to reach with the right hand over to the left and down and vice versa. And to isolate that as well and to stop the rotation that happens, you want to be holding toys always down. So not necessarily all the way over here to get trunk rotation, down but slightly to the side and then you might want to restrain the other hand for children who have less ability to follow instructions. I hope that you found this useful and you can start to build in some dynamic stretches into your rift and pace use.